Did you see it? Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, I was commentating, and Jason wasn't his usual self. Chris played very well. <coughs> Jason made a few errors, and that gave Belarus a little bit of hope. And Team Belarus missed a, quite an easy six ball to go 5-3 up. And from that, that moment on, they closed the match out very nice indeed. I think Estonia also had a big drama against Belgium. I think they were down like 5-0 or something. And then they actually managed to come back and then there was like a time foul or something on, on Serge Das. And they never recovered from it. Yeah, it was a little bit like the last match we've just witnessed. Very similar Brandon story, the way Great Britain the match out. To break. So Jason Shaw will be breaking in the first rack. Yeah, did a good cut break there. Got a little kick on the cue ball. And I think he's on the one ball and I think if someone can make it or would try it, it's probably Chris Melling. Probably goes around 12 rails. And he's probably good. Yeah, it looks very thin, so... He might go like four rails. Get the cue ball center table. One, two, and nice touch on the eight ball. Rich shot there. Yeah, if there's a small criticism to make, I think Jason's just playing a hair too quick. Shot there from Chris. Good opening rack here from England A. Looking good so far. So time to talk about your match call. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling okay now. It was uh, a little bit scary out there. Greece kind of let us off the hook early doors. Thought it was going to be one of the matches where you know they just go on and win seven one seven two, but. They let us off a few racks early doors and we had a couple of nice rolls to to sort of get a lead and then things started to get a little bit crazy out there. <laughs> so who you got next? Holland? Yeah, we play Team Netherlands tomorrow at two thirty I believe. Race to nine, so you never know if my partner finds some some eyes, we might have half a chance. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, why did he take the glasses off? Well, he, he actually said he, he feels like he's seeing okay today, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure about that one. And at the end, the very last six ball he potted, when he came out of the chair, I said, I think you should put your glasses on for this one. <laughs> But he said, no, we're going to leave him off, so we'll see what, Current score is one we'll, zero we'll see what happens Britain, tomorrow Britain when a, the glasses make an appearance a or they don't. Break. Or something else. Hit them a little bit wrong. Wingball didn't go down. 
Not sure if they got an open shot on the one ball. Might go for a combination. Yeah, the wing ball's been going in quite useful all day and night today. But you still got to hit them right. Dennis Grabe is the man at the table. Such a big character. Definitely the leader of the team. Thirty-one years of age. Been playing till twenty-five years. He's won three Euro tours, which is no mean feat. And he's been to the quarter-finals of the 2016 World Nine Ball Championship. What year did you win the World Nine Ball, Albin? Uh, 16. And, uh, no. Yeah, 16. Did you play uh, Dennis in the quarters? Because that was the year we got to the quarter final. No, I played. Good question. Just no, I played Samis against... Um, I play course against the Pegaline, I believe. No, against uh, Jason. And the semis against Pegaline, and finally against Shane. Nice, easy run then. Yeah, it was quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job it worked, Slovakia. Uh, yeah. Jesus. That was incredible. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to believe what happened. Um, they just played an incredible match there. And, uh, well, can't do much against it, you know. Just frozen in the chair for like 25 minutes. And uh, nothing to, to say about it. I mean, they, they just didn't risk too much. And uh, Jakob played some really good shots. And uh, after a while, also Jaroslav got into the game and felt very comfortable and in the end on 6-1 they just uh, kept us hooked like Extension. three four times and uh, Mario went for a tough shot and uh, well it was like uh, you know to hope to to get a chance if he makes it that uh, we can make it back into the game but uh, heads up to them they played phenomenal for the first year and they're still in the game yeah, if there's one good thing to come out of it, at least he followed it up with a tremendous performance again. Yeah. And they're still in. Yeah, they fought hard against the uh, Czech Republic, even if it wasn't, even if the performance wasn't as good as the, in the previous match, but uh, they made an incredible game on 6 6. So a little bit of a wrong position here from Mark. I believe Dennis will tell him what he did wrong after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he, he, yeah. Oh wow, I didn't think he could cut that ball, but where's the cue ball going? Good shot there. It still needs one one good shot to come. In 2019, their opening match. Or was it their second match? I think it might have been their second match. I think they had a good win in the first round. Yeah, in 2019 when they lost, they lost Hill Hill. And, well, it was an absolute classic. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. If you want to watch that match, head over to Matchroom, to the YouTube channel. It'll be on there. It is TV Gold. Who did they play? Canada? I think yeah, it was I, more a pick a line. Possibly, yeah. I've, I have forgot their opponent, but it was just, it was just brilliant TV, to be quite honest. <laughs> And Dennis has got a tricky thin one with the bridge. Yeah, good shot there. Where's the cue ball going? Oh, he's fine. Yeah, good shots here from Dennis. To tie up 1 1. Jason Shaw is the man on the right, of course. I'm sure we all know him. 32 years of age now. Lives in America. Been there for a few years. Married to Ara Shaw. Two children. Actually just got a pool room recently. Bought it off his wife's parents, I believe.
Yeah, that rack will s settle the stone when you're down. It's always nice to get that first rack on the board. And looks a little bit scary at times, but the main thing is the nine ball disappeared. There you see the wonderful arena. Of a games room type feel with the, the games in the background. Have you played on any of them yet, Albin? Have you had a chance? No, not really. I'm very busy with the art job. So, uh, but I will do later when you're maybe out of the tournament. You got your job back. <laughs> you haven't broken yet. Yes. Rack number three. Current score is one I'm to just one. Just please to replace one good looking fella with another. Estonia. <laughs> To break. So the wing ball has been disappearing, keeping on the green six. And there it goes. Maybe a little bit of too much of a cut break there. A little bit lost control of the cue ball. But I think he's still fine on the one ball, playing it to the side. It looks very tight in the side, so I think they're just having a discussion about is there an obvious safety shot? sporty yeah. shot there that was very tight but he's judged it well yeah, and looks like they're going for the combination the three nine yeah, if he does play for Stand the combo plays. you sort of want to leave your partner straight on it you don't want to leave a big angle and they've just had a little chat about maybe leaving Maybe a shot into the right centre with the red three. So we'll see what Graybo wants to play. Yeah, I'm not sure if he tried to hit it full in the face, the five ball, or actually tried to pass the five ball. It was like 50-50, I think. I think it's good to play it into the side. Instant shot. Hit. Yeah, it's just good enough. Albin, Mark Maggi, does, does he play on the Euro Tours? Obviously, I've not been on that scene for a long while, so I'm not, you know, obviously I've seen him in the World Cups and stuff, but is he a, is he a Euro Tour player? I'm pretty sure he is. He also plays at the European Championships, but I believe he's quite young. I think he's a little bit, or maybe he's 20 or something, a little bit over, because I believe a couple of years ago he played the under, it was like under 19 or something, European Championships or under 20, whatever. So I think he's quite young, but he does play some Euro Tours. Well, here's me thinking he was in his 30s. <laughs> well, this is the shot where you want to play it with a bit of drag. They see the cue ball slow up as it got towards the seven ball and I think Mark's got a nice little angle. He can just play two rails back down to the right hand side of the table and so far so good for Estonia just needs to avoid the, the right and middle needs this to slow up it was definitely tracking towards it so Dennis will be queuing down a little bit
This is a little tester. Straight into the heart of the pocket. Dream start for Estonia. It's 2-1. Welcome back. Great Britain A. I'll play in Estonia. Number four. Our current the trailer four, two, two one. Estonia, very in good start. Of Estonia. And of course, on Estonia paper we would break. well we would have Chris and Jason slight favourites. But they know they're in a little battle now. Matt Maggi is breaking in the fourth. Now you see the wing ball is flying in and he needs this three ball to get out of the way and I don't think it has. And to be honest, I think that was the softest break we have seen so far. <clears throat> Can he play a cross bank maybe? Can he get the cue ball out of the way of a double hit? Yeah, he might go for the bank here. It's quite an open shot, and if he misses it, he could leave a safety. Played with inside English, go two rails. Extension. Extension, please. Thank you. 
What do you like, Albin? Is the cross bank on or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, good shot there. I think there was no need to play push out or whatever. looks like a 3-1 lead right now. Yeah, the balls are all there. Just a case of trying not to do anything silly. We've seen some crazy things happen on crazy Wednesday, as it's known now in the pool world. Such an easy game when the cue ball is in perfect position every shot, but the minute you start to lose the cue ball like Mr. Maggi has just done, is when silly things start to happen. About a foot harder than he should have been, so now Graybo, he's going to pull out a bit of a tricky shot. Did the pocket almost a little bit too much there. But it's in and good position there. Yeah, I think he had to play it off the right hand side of the pocket. Just to cheat the angle to get the cue ball over. And it was a good shot in the end. And well it's a good run out. He started with a cross bank. Estonia 3-1. Not going Great Britain's way. Am I being a bit harsh to say their tournament hasn't really started because yesterday they weren't brilliant themselves? Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, maybe a bit of pressure going on the last match each day, uh, seeing the other guys go through, especially the Great Britain C team. Really? So it, 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 it can definitely play a part. Uh, it's like a long day waiting around to play. And the Estonians look really relaxed in this match because I think that they know they've nothing to lose and they're both good players. So, and it looks like they've got the breakdown, which is very important. And when you're at the table, there's nothing the opponents can do. That's a really good point, actually, because I've seen the guys all day, literally from nine this morning. Mm. It's, can you overthink sometimes? Yeah, definitely. And uh, in a race to seven, winner breaks, the game can get away from you very quickly. And uh, so Chris and Jason have got to stay patient uh, I think the chances will come, but when they do get the chance, they've got to make the most of it and make no mistakes like did yesterday. All right, for now, thank you, Mr. Quarter Finalist. From one quarter finalist to another. Well, Alden, why is my partner not on the practice table? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should definitely spend some time there. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Our current score is three to one in favour of Estonia. a little bit Estonia. rusty. Estonia to break. Because it's funny that uh, he should be actually be preparing for World Championships, and you shouldn't. But you did less errors, I think. Well, to be honest, that my mindset was just to try and cast the mind back to all the big Moscone Cup matches you play in doubles, and and of course this event, and just tried to think like it was yesterday. That was the game plan. Oh. Yeah, that looks a little bit like Eurotour break, but uh, a little bit unlucky there. Dennis Grave is a very animated player. You ain't going to see nothing but pure emotion on that man's face. So we're going to see a push out there. Where do you push to here, Alvin? Yeah, just thinking if they leave a safety, so they leave a jump shot on the push out, or it just showed they might put the seven to the two ball. 
Extension. Extension, please. I mean, not in this case, but sometimes push out. when you're playing a push out and you know you're playing somebody who might not be a great long potter, you could often tempt your opponent into a long pot, but when you've got Chris Mellon and Chase and Shaw sat in the chair, that's well, definitely not an option. Great Britain A, your choice. Well, I think that push out was uh, Maggie's yes. choice. And uh, I think I know why Dennis was maybe a little bit against it, because, of course, if he makes it, there's not really a chance to get position. So I'm not sure if he really goes for it. Yeah, so he's in total safety now. Yeah, at first, when he played that push-out, I thought it wasn't a bad push-out, because I thought they might try and kick it off the top rail just to get the one yeah. ball down the bottom, but on with you, Alvin, jumping that in. Well, good luck, Dennis. Look to come off the back rail right behind it, just like what that. What a great kick that was! Unbelievable. Yeah, it was a good jump shot, but it was kind of a nothing shot. But his partner no, has played properly his greatest kick shot since he's been in Milton Keynes. Another jump shot coming up Station, from the eagle eye. Not sure if he really, if he's really going for it or trying to go for like two rail safety. Yeah, he went. Oh well, that turned out. Wow. <laughs> I would say that turned out good. Yeah, that's a phenomenal piece of fortune there. Not only has he got the hook, he sat right on top of the nine, so I don't even think he can hit a side rail. So that is a Can't timely really bit do of luck. anything there. And he has no extension left. He has eight seconds. It's a foul. No. Illegal contact. Yeah, just trying to tie the balls up there, but... Start the clock, please. It was very dangerous and not easy to do that. I think Estonia have just got to stay with the game, now. You know, Dennis has got to... He's clearly the lead player in that team. He's got to make his partner comfortable and try not to put too much pressure on him. It was the good fortune from Jason Shaw that is probably going to win him this rap. It wasn't a bad shot from mark at all So just like that. Great Britain Air back in this match. Well, he was never really out of the match as such, but 3 2 is better than 4 1. It looks like Jason will be breaking in the next rack. Mm -hmm. 
basically called. Chris and Jason have a <coughs> chin work there. Chris <coughs> Mallin, 42 <coughs> years of age. Yeah. Actually being a professional snooker player on the circuit, as well as a world champion at English 8 ball. 20 years ago, he reached the last 16 of the World 9 ball championships. He actually beat Steve Davis on the way. Alden, <coughs> trivia question. Who beat Chris in the last 16? It was only 20 years ago. Was you yeah. born? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to let you have a think about it. Rack, is he six, from Asia? Three to two in favor of no. Estonia. No. Have a little think a about it. A little break. trivia question for you, pal. Jason Shaw. Well. To get this rack underway. I don't know many players who played the World Championships 20 years ago, but I go with the easiest name, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very valid guess, but it wasn't. It was... I'm going to give you his nickname, the Dancing Bear. Oh, I heard of it. Who's the Dancing Bear? You just have a think about that. I think Chris can chop this ball in the middle. If not, is the bank on? I think it chops in the middle. He's trying to... Yep, he did chop in the middle, and that's pretty good. The four ball passes the seven, so JC can just try and get in between the two balls. Lost the cue ball a little bit, but that's not bad. Chris is such a good potter. I still have no clue who Dancing Bear is. Right, I'm going to tell you because you're not going to guess it. Elaine Martel. I think I've never heard of it. From America? From Canada. I remember watching it all them years was ago. Was it in Cardiff? It was in Cardiff and he was a big fella and he used to wear a Cardiff Attention, please. to play, honestly. <laughs> you should YouTube it tonight. It's funny. Chris drops his extension and then chucks it on the chair. And it was the break of Jason Shaw that give Great Britain the chance to tie the match up. And in the blink of an eye, they do tie the match up. Chris and Jason back in this game. It's 3 3.
you want your beautiful face on one of these screens? Pool fans, head over to matchroompool.com. Get your face up there in this wonderful arena. Rack number seven. We are currently tied at three games apiece. Great Britain A. So we know the wing ball's been kind today. So we're kind of expecting it to go in the pocket, and it does. And are they going to have a shot? Well, at the last minute, the cue ball's nudged the three into a safe place. I think the three ball will bank in the side once they remove the two ball, so that might be an option, maybe even... Yeah, and it's a good shot now from the one to the two. Watch out for the side pocket. Ow. Well, Jason's lost the cue ball there. Start the clock, please. Now, the beauty of this for Estonia is they're going to be able to put the cue ball exactly where they want in order to get Ow. the best position for the three. Well, look at the emoji there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit mean, isn't it? I hope Jason's not looking at the screen. <laughs> wow. That's what you want to see after Extension, please. a scratch. I'm sure there were plenty of them emojis in our match. So what's he going for here? He's going to open up. Oh, good shot there. Yeah, clever shot there from Greybog. Mr. Grape. Maybe a little bit too much angle. Might has to Yeah, can he draw it back or has to go on the other side with the cue ball? Yeah, he's fine there. Yeah, that was the type of shot where some players prefer to kind of like cinch it and pull the cue ball back to where it is and other players might force it over to the other side of the table. I don't think there's a right or wrong shot there. It's personal preference. I think when you were playing your match album, we could have done with the shot emoji on the <laughs> screen. Yeah, that would have been perfect. Shocked and uh, maybe crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fun and games here in Milton Keynes. But it's not fun and games for Mark Madji because his partner's left him this tricky little combo. Would you always shoot the combo or is there a case for hooking behind the nine? Well, he's hooking behind the nine, that's fair well, enough. I would have been definitely going for the combo and uh, played uh, with a little bit of speed to get the cue ball back down table and uh, leave him at least a tough shot if I miss it. So, but like you said, it's personal preference, I think, if you go for a combo or play safety. Yeah, Chris Stinging Mallins at please. the table, he does have a knack of pulling out these shots. And perfect for him, playing kick shot. He looks at all the rails, all the possibilities. Now, he's trying to put it in this right-hand corner, but also he'll take a safety off it, bumping the five onto the side rail as well. He's hit it a little bit full. Hit it a little bit on the wrong side. Still a good kick there. So big shot coming up for Dennis. Yeah, good news was he got the distance and that's pretty much all you can ask for really. Make your opponent play a shot rather than you know, giving him an easy, so Dennis has got to stay still and he's just got to pop the ball. Now you see he's forced the miss, that was all down to the good kick shot from Chris and this can happen in pool, this is part of the game. Cash your mind back, Jason Shaw's jump shot. He got lucky, now it's Estonia's turn to get lucky. 
always hurts though when it happens against yourself. Yeah, so here you will go with left English, try to hit the rail first, try to make the four ball. Very good hit there, good speed. I think he's fully hooked behind the eight. And now it's a turn for Moggy to show his. Yeah, that shot Jason's just played does come up a lot in pool. You often try and pot it into the corner. And if you hit it a little bit thick, it can bounce back over onto the bottom rail. So it's a very nice shot from Jason. Now, the problem is he might hit the nine ball. He did hit the nine ball, but he hit it thin. And is it his turn to get fortunate? It is, so Chris mm -hmm. will be going airborne here. Trying to pop the five in the top left. Now, Chris is known as the magician, but at the last event, the Predator Championship League pool, well, we changed his nickname to the shot maker because Efren Reyes is known as the magician. Oh, and I thought he'd potted it. <laughs> that was so close. Yeah, good try there. I mean, if we're being a little bit critical, Albin, he did lose the cue ball, didn't he? It wasn't, <laughs> well, it wasn't a control shot, was it? No, of course. But it was quite a distance, so. And another shot with a little bit of distance here. Just all about making the shot, staying down on the shot. Yeah, good shot there. And they have the lead again. Yeah, it's fair to say uh, Mark Maggi's looked a different player in this this World Cup of Pool. Unlike two years ago, he was a little bit edgy and a little bit like a rabbit in the headlights, but he played okay. Margins, key moments. Darren, that could be a key moment. Yeah, that was massive there because Great Britain had the momentum and I feel like Estonia got a little bit fortunate in that rack. Uh, but uh, you need that little bit of luck and they're definitely getting the rolls right now and uh, they needed that rack. I really feel like Estonia needed that rack to stay in the match. Uh, so now it's going to be uh, one of those where it's uh, it's going to come down to a lot of pressure, a lot of nerves, and uh, which team holds holds herself better together. We've seen it a lot this week. The eighth rack often being the key. Yeah, their eighth racks are not nice, <laughs> <laughs> from my experience. Uh, but yeah, uh, race to seven, four, three. I think now it's flick a coin really. Yeah, thanks very much, Darren. Um, Albert in the studio. He's maybe on a scouting mission with Dennis as well, because he's got him potentially at the World Pool Masters next week, haven't you, Alvin? <laughs> oh, well, we're friends off the table. So, uh, yeah, he, he's playing Gomez uh, first and the winner plays me. I think it's a pretty even match, uh, Grab against Gomez, but I'm really looking forward finally to play a match and hopefully I can make more than three balls the next time. The current score is four to three in favour of Well, if Estonia, you do make more than three balls and Estonia win the match, it doesn't get any easier because you'll face Joshua Filler or Chris Mellin or Sanjin from Bosnia. So you're in a tough little section there, pal. I'm ready. Well, we could always swap roles and you can go, go in the <laughs> studio and I'll take your place at the bottom of the draw. Yeah, probably ask Emily about that. <laughs> now we see Mark Maggi playing a little cut break. Yeah, another soft break there. But still lost a little bit of control. I think he didn't want to go that far with the cue ball. Still got a shot on the one. Yeah, you can pot the one ball, but the two ball doesn't go in any corner pocket at the bottom of the table, so this is the big discussion going on. Yeah. 
playing this with extreme left and he does need to kind of hit the rail Extension just board. above the side pocket if he doesn't hit the rail just above the side pocket might not come out too good well he's played the bank and he's hooked his partner so he's made the bank and the full hit on the five is good news for Great Britain eh? it's an easy hit off the side rail though so what's the purpose of the shot here Alden yeah I guess he wants to get the two ball behind the three and nine maybe stop the the cue ball on the five and get up table it's all about the speed here. Yeah, he a little bit too thick. Got away with it. Wow. Pretty sure here we're gonna see a jump shot from Jason. Jump shot combination. There you see a wry smile from Jason. Can He's thinking. Please? Why me? But you've seen it all before, Jason. You've done it to other players. You've got to stay in the moment. He's got half a chance of playing a good jump safe here. Maybe even putting the eight. And he's got distance, so that's fine. Yeah, good shot there. You can see the edge of the two ball. I'm not sure if the three ball is now possible to the corner pocket. Is it, is it a little bit too fat? Didn't want that. But maybe he was just focusing on getting a good cue ball and leaving distance, so that's a job well done. And if the two doesn't well it's a bit tricky this because of the eight ball, isn't it? Alden? I think he will try to go for it. I don't see any other options here. Could possibly play into the three and try and get the cue ball in behind the eight. Is that wow. it a rail? It's going to be no ball in hand to Estonia. Big mistake Foul. there from Chris. That was unexpected. After contact, a ball must hit a rail unless you pop the ball. So they see a contact and nothing reaches a rail. And that's a foul hit the nine ball tool. It's all about the pink four ball now. That's going to be the key ball in this rack. I mean, it does look like it's an easy combo, doesn't it? So. That's not the best shot, is it? Would you have left a cue ball there for the three ball? Maybe he's okay. Maybe he can just play in between the gap of the purple five and the nine ball. There's the click that a pool player often does. Yeah. Pretty famous since uh, Petroni did it. Well, he's actually going perfect on this combo because the cue ball's going to naturally slide over to the right hand side of the table for the four. Oh, and that is a huge, huge mistake from Mark Madger. And let me tell you, Danny Scrape's face in the chair is not going to be a pretty sight. Nope. That is a must-make combo at this level. It really is. Mark might want to sit in the England's chair right now, not <laughs> next to Dennis. <laughs> yeah, that's wise words. Yeah, the big difference between 4-4 in 5-3 and having a break. Yep, 
Yeah. Strange that they got away with the with the ball in hand. I'm sure we'll get a look at Dennis's base in a moment. He's not going to be happy because he played a wonderful shot to get back on that combo. He couldn't have asked for the cue ball being in a better position. And let's be honest, it weren't the most difficult of combos. And as Albin said, they'd have been 5-3 up with the break, and now it's 4-4. GB will be breaking. The shot clock as well, so it's like you've like rushed it as well. So it's like we've rushed it as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. You should just be there doing what you're doing, and I'll keep an eye on the time. Yeah. You do what you need to do on the shot, or me on the shot, yeah, and you just watch the clock. Bit of a team talk going on there about the shot clock. Of course, it's something important uh, if you have a discussion before every ball or, or not, or you just do what you want to do and I do what I want to do. So um, I think many teams do it differently. Some just don't talk at all. What about you and Darren? If the, if the balls are all sitting you know, in off, obvious positions, kind of just currently tied like each other get on apiece. with it, but Great Britain if, a if I break. spot like a shot where you could maybe put the cue ball in two positions, I might say, where do you prefer? And you might say anywhere or try and get me there. We don't really, we don't really mind a little chat at the table, to be fair. So Jason's made a ball and this is a thin shot for Chris. Cue ball's going to be the issue because it's going to be tracking back down the table and there's a lot of balls there he can cannon into, so he's going to need to try and find a gap. The two ball doesn't pass the six, so he can't play the cue ball into the red three as a, as a holder. So he's taking this on and he needs to try and avoid these balls down the bottom end of the table. He's done a good job with this. He's done a wonderful job. And he found the gap between the seven and the four. Great shot there. Still, I think it's a little bit too short. Got to do something with the cue ball now. And Another great shot there, and again, I think he's a little bit of angle, but I think he's fine. So I think right now it's all about getting from the six to the seven. This is what great players do. They own in on the mistake from their opponent. So the Mark Maggi miss combo might not just cost them that one rack, it could cost them at least two racks. Maybe more. One good shot here from Chris. And it's gonna be 5-4, I guess. And he scratched into the side. Oh, wow. my word. They were looking good. Chris has played very well in this event. I really fancy him to get Jason on the seven. Well, it's a crucial, crucial rack too. Look at that. He was trying to miss the side pocket. Come just below the eight. But he's delivered the cue all wrong. It was coming too fast down the table. And this is a big let off for Team Estonia. 
that match he played a bit of a strange opening shot now he's I mean yeah he's on the nine but he should be straight in on the nine wow Estonia take the lead it's 5-4 Team GB I've got it all to do Welcome back. This is an enthralling match we've got now. Estonia have just stole a rack after the Chris Mellin scratch. Rack number 10. Estonia 5. The current score is 5 Great to 4. A4. In favour of Dennis Estonia. Grape to break. Estonia to break. Totally lost control of the cue ball, hit it way too thin and got kicked up table, almost scratched into the corner. But still managed to make two balls. And they probably want to go for safety here. Guess they could try to get the cue ball. Maybe behind the four, between seven and nine. I don't know if that's on. Okay. 
or just put the two balls Extension, in please. between those four balls center table. Yeah, if they could push the two ball towards the nine and the red three, maybe the eight would be a blocker as well. Don't know. Go real first. Yeah, I thought so because that was the last thing I saw that they were talking about hitting it from the back. I would say it turned out really good. Yeah, it's a good shot that. Two ball is near the corner though, so there is a there is a natural angle on and Extension, please. Chris is known for pulling these type of shots out. I think that's why Jason's kinda let him carry on and play this shot. Yeah, so here he tries to measure the angle where he is to hit into the cushion. And let's see if it worked out. And it was a close Foul. one. A little contact. bit too soft. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's give up ball in hand, but let me tell you, that was close. No, he didn't hit the two, but... When you see the replay off the back rail, just watch how close this goes off the second rail. Just through the gap, just misjudged it slightly. Now, can Estonia win a huge rack here? Can they hold themselves together to get on the hill? You just feel it's a rack where if they win the rack, well, they've got a genuine chance of winning the match, and if they lose the rack, I don't know, I feel like it will cost them the match. So big, big moments coming up. He has queued some nice Just balls down. in, to be fair, as Mark, the little long ones where you need to stay still and queue straight. He's got Dennis on the right side of this four ball, so getting up for the five. It's not difficult. Dennis wants to play for the five in the side. Matt wants him to play the five in the top corner. So let's see what Dennis does. He listens to his partner. I think that's a sensible shot, what Mark suggested. I think he still did a good job there. I think he has the right angle to hold the cue ball there, get perfect position for seven. Or he might stun it in, go one rail. Looks like. Not sure if that works 100%. Maybe it has to go into the eight. Wow. Good shot. That is a very good shot indeed. That could have gone wrong and it's come out absolutely plump. So, Team GBA. A little bit of a sad face there from Jason. Well, yeah. they've done a good job here, Alvin, haven't they? Yeah, it was a very good wreck. Nice safety play. And they're on the hill. Okay, Darren, it's genuinely squeaky bum time now for Great Britain, isn't it? Estonia have been very consistent. Yeah, uh, Estonia played nicely, and that rack there at 4-4 four, four when Chris scratched in the side pocket is proving to be very costly, I think. Just haven't really got going, have they, this tournament? Yeah, Chris, uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, Jason looks like he's played better than yesterday, and Chris has not brought his level from yesterday today, and that's doubles. It, sometimes it happens, but Estonia's played well. they put them under pressure, uh, but still not over. They've still got to get over the line. And this Estonian side, maybe looking at the tournament odds and looking at the players, maybe slightly underestimated. Big time. Uh, I said before this match that this is a dangerous match for GB. 
Uh, Dennis is a, a very established player. Has been knocking on the door for the Moscone Cup the last few years. He's just got him, he just got himself a spot in the World Masters for the first time, and is is a, is a top player in Europe. Okay, could this be the last racket? Six four to Estonia. Back to the commentary team. Yeah, Darren Attleton in the studio there with still Michael. not practicing. Yeah, still not practicing. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Bracket number 11, current score is 6-4 to four in favour of mm. Estonia. Estonia to break on the hill. What a story it would be, England C, only team in the quarterfinal. Can we just be called Great Britain if they go out? Oh, sorry. We? Great Britain C. We sorry, can, sir. We can lose the C if there's just one team left. Oh, ah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, I'm not convinced with this soft break at all. And it didn't work out. Just he got a little bit punished for the soft break right now. Yeah, why, why would you risk it, Alden? Surely the guys have been watching some of the pools today. Everyone's just been hitting the break medium to yeah. hard pace and making the wing ball. It just makes no sense. Well, if it works out, why not? Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. But uh, I'm also not a fan of the break like the Luna. I think it's not really necessary to hit them with full speed. But um, yeah, I mean, if he likes it, he won't like it now, I think. So GBA, I've got to win the last three racks to stay in this competition. He needs a good nudge. He needs a good nudge. The faces will tell a story. And I don't think it's bad, you know, because, yeah, that's going to work. Just a little swerve shot, maybe even just a little bit of spin. Well, that's going to work lovely. Needs an angle on the four ball to get back down for this five. Did he run the cue and ball far enough? And that's way too short, I believe. Yeah, he wants to be near the ball line there, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, I don't know if he's got to draw this back or... Oh, he can power it off the rail, so it's not too bad. Yeah, very good shot there. Yeah, very good shot there. He's left Jason. Perfect. Just to come through the gap. Might see a hill hill again. There was only one. So this was a nice rack in the end. They were under big pressure. And it was a good rack, 6-5. I just don't agree with the break that Mark Maggi tried to do there, I really don't. He's 6-4 up. It's obviously going to be your last break, regardless. And he was relying on making the wing ball. I'd rather give him a little bit more pace and Try and make another. Yeah, what are the GB boys here. saying? Let's have a listen. Into the, the I know, they have played it. Why? Pop one, pop the two, use the three, pop the three, and use the three to look at the ball. Yeah, but it, it was just an automatic angle. The chances are not getting on it had the, the other side of the gate. That's only if you can name the other side of the gate. I think having a little think discussion this, about the one ball from Jason. I think uh, they could have gone wrong easily. But uh, got a nice touch there from the 8 and the 9. But I think Jason actually intended to hit the 8 and 9. And I think Chris maybe didn't saw that shot coming. But we have a 6-5 now. Yeah, one thing we won't be seeing here is a soft break from Chris Mallet, that's for sure. Rack number 12, current score is 6-5, Estonia, Great Britain A, two break. This will be straight down the nose. There you go, wing ball straight in. 
have they got a shot? They have got a shot. Oh, well, they did have a shot. That is incredible. They were straight in for the one ball in the side. Look at the six ball, the green six coming round the table. Does it go in the corner past the eight? If you can see the potting angle, that is. It's close, they're both having a look. Graybo's even having a look <laughs> in his chair. Just stand up, pal, have yeah. a look. <laughs> stand up, stand behind Jason, you still can see it probably. That's a tough one. And 6-5 down. Yeah, he's playing the cue ball, I think, over towards the pink four. Extension, please. He's still having a look. I don't think this goes Alden because yeah and I think it's also very risky actually um, because it's like all or nothing push out I think oh he's playing push out okay Stonia, yeah, I you're think option. good choice there yeah so there you see the push out coming into its own he could see the one ball he could see an edge of it but after the break shot you can Elect to always play a push out. Now it's decision time, Alden. What do you see, pal? Well, I see a two way shot. He could cut in the one ball and maybe also try the six ball. You're a braver man than me, pal. <laughs> well, that should, shouldn't, I think Maggie shouldn't play that shot <laughs> because if he misses it. I'd stick up that way to so carry on, fellas. <laughs> I would. I would, actually, I think I would give it back. I mean, he could stop the one ball on the six, try to get the one ball next to the four, and the cue ball back down table behind the three. Yeah, I just don't see. The cue ball's tight on the rail. I don't see an easy Let's shot. Let's see what the eagle eye sees. Yeah, he's got to come with something good. And I'm struggling to see what he's going to come with. It's been a long day. Is he playing it into the, the high side of the six so the one ball runs onto the top rail? And just gets the cue ball back down table. He's got seven seconds, no extension. And he's played a contain and if this hits the eight wrong, he's left the pot. Well, that's not bad, is it? And he's tied the six and the four up, I believe. I think uh, it's quite a clever shot actually to tie up the six or the, the four with the six and try to hook him behind eight and nine. So, um, well, the one ball, I think it's not on. That's a tough one Extension, as well. Please. You see something? Well, it definitely doesn't go. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just about to say one thing is obviously Chris and Jason Shaw, very experienced in this situation. You know, Dennis Graves on Euro tours. I think he might go for a three railer here. It's the one ball okay. to bounce. Needs it to bounce. It was a big body movement, I believe. Yeah, the shot he played was sort of there, he just under it the one ball a little bit, didn't he? Now, this is an interesting one. If he pots the one ball clean, does the cue ball... Well, he's, you see the way he's queuing down, so... He's potting this. No, he's missed it. He has missed it. And I think the three ball's going to come... And... Save the day. There's the combo on. Well, right. I've called a shot there, Alvin. Yeah, when you
you're striking down on the cue ball, you can put a bit of unwanted yeah, spin. Yeah, I believe the combo is on. Could get a good one ball, and the cue ball might run up the table. This is for the match. No, he's played it bad. He's left the one ball on. I'm not really sure why he played forward and not like stop shot or maybe even draw it back. So maybe hide the cue ball behind the three ball. It's like a two way shot because it was a tough combo. Yeah, very tough. Now, can they play a Karen off the edge of the four to pop the six? If it's in a similar position to where it is now, I think that shot is on. But of course, you've got to control the four ball. Well, he's played for the bank, has he? Or is he playing the billiard still? I think he will carry him it. I mean, it's a quite easy shot, I would say. It's all about controlling the four ball. Not sure if he's trying to hit the, f the four on the nine. Stop it there. Yeah, very good shot. Yeah, purposely played the four into the nine, and now this is a wonderful chance to tie this match up, and it will be the second Hill Hill match of the event. This has been a good performance in this rap. They've stayed patient. They've played some good shots. They've asked their opponents to question. And it's going to go down to the last rack. OK, like many World Cups and many sports, we see England, Great Britain, Scotland. Penalties, it's like, it is like penalties now, isn't it? Yeah, now it's uh, having the breaks an advantage, uh, for sure. But it's all about pressure now. I think we've seen the last rack or two where both both teams sort of played the wrong shot, I would say, but that was a, a, a stone. He went for the 1-9 the combination there. I think that's like sort of panicking a little bit, trying to get over the line as quick as possible. But I think GB have showed a lot of art here just to make it 6-6. Six, six. And of the two teams, you have to put them slight favourite because they've got the break. Yeah, last few racks showing their class, possibly. Look, that nice bit of sportsmanship there as well. Yeah, all, all uh, good friends off the table. Uh, this is like do or die now and uh, you can see Chris, Chris and Jason are really enjoying Chris, it. Chris, will you stop giggling for goodness and, sake? Uh, it's penalties. Yeah, it's massive. So we'll see what happens. Right, here we go. What, what a day we've had. Here we go. Seven, six all. Alvin, call it. What's going to happen? Well, if you look at the previous years, it didn't always go well for Team Estonia on a hill hill. Um, <coughs> Yeah, uh, I go with uh, GBA. Yeah, I think just purely off experience, Jason, Chris, they've been in the big arenas, they've won the big tournaments. And Estonia. I well, just really yeah. hope for Maggi, if Bracket they lose, 13. that he doesn't come to the table. Six, six. <laughs> so just run Great out by, by break GBA, break another mistake or something. Where's the one ball going to finish? Where's the one ball going to finish? It's going to finish tight on the top rail. It does cut, yeah, the, but it's very thin. I think that it was pretty much the same on his previous break. The one ball went two rails, up table ended up where it is now. So it's a little bit too much speed. Well, it isn't Jason's shot. He's just <laughs> having a look. Well, it's it's definitely tougher than the previous one Chris made. Alvin, I think he's got to go for it because... It's Chris. <laughs> well, well, where do you play safe there? Yeah. I mean, I know you can play a push out. Yeah, but of course, it's open table. 
quite tough to find the right spot. And, um, extension, please. This shows how tough the shot is because of the extension. He's what not is playing doing? it. He's chipping off the left-hand side of the one. He's hit wow. it all wrong. He and has hit this way too thick. Wasn't convinced with that shot selection, but not the man at the table. He kind of got away with it. I guess that's a very, very tough shot now on 6-6. Six, six. I'm 100% sure it will be Dennis who goes for it. Yeah, Dennis Grabe. He's a three-time Euro please. Tour winner, so he has beat the greatest players in the world. He's been to the quarter-final of the maybe, World Nine Ball Championships. Yeah, maybe we can have a little look on the body movement. Just got to knock it in, pal. You knock it in. <laughs> you knock this ball in, and you've got a chance to get into the quarter-final. It's not easy. It's on the rail. And he's missed it. Oh. He's missed the one ball. And the okay. position for two ball wouldn't have been any better. So what's he going to do? Okay. Well. Good shot there. Key shot coming up. Jason Shaw's got to make sure he gets... Chris Melling good on this four. Estonia, they had half a chance. And he's not good on the four. Well, he needs an angle. Well, he's been fortunate there, Alvin. If that lands straight, he's in a world of trouble. Now, Chris, he does have a shot here. It's easier. I think the shot is easier when you're left-handed. I think he's okay. I think he can. He doesn't have to get close to the five as long as he pots it and comes just out. There you see, he's got a nice angle. Yeah, he's played it well. Oh. He's played it well. Big bounce. Well, I say he's played it well. It just kept going, didn't it? That is thinner than it looks, and where the nine ball is, he's either going to have to play this with extreme left. Oh, he's probably just going to pot it and leave the cue ball. No extension anymore. Yeah, up to where he's kind of looking. Anywhere, anywhere near where a player would break from would be good enough for Chris. Oh, my word! Oh. Have you ever seen drama like this in a last rack? Wow, the, the scratch. Well, Alvin... I don't agree with the shot he's tried to play there, but what drama. Mark Maggi with the easiest nine ball in his life. Wow. To get what through. What the end of the match. To the quarterfinals. Unbelievable scenes here. And Maggi made the final nine. Well, you saw it, didn't you? <laughs>